So I love, uh, so I've been a gamer for uh, as long as I can remember. Um, these days, mostly I play FPSs. So I play first person shooters more than any other type of game. I think part of the reason is I can consume the content very rapidly. Uh, the games are usually short, relatively speaking, compared to uh, a real time strategy game or an MMORPG. Um, <clears throat> and I think I moved to first person shooters uh, primarily. I mean, I still play other games all the time, but I think I moved in college because I got tired of, I was a PC gamer for a while, and I got tired of every new version of Unreal or Half-Life or whatever it was that was coming out. Uh, it meant I had to buy basically a new video card or turn all the settings down so that it looked like shit and there was no point in playing that game. So I got tired of uh, not being able to play a game without you know dropping an extra 400 bucks on the latest greatest video card. Uh, started moving more towards consoles and then uh, because of the pricing and then after that uh, was yeah I got started going, I think uh, FPS is in particular because of the time commitment required uh, just because you got a lot of things that uh, you know I should be uh, doing <laughs> and so I don't have like you know uh, I don't have the time to play StarCraft anymore although I love StarCraft. Um, Um, one of the things that really struck me, and I've spoken about this before, is uh, the nature of competition changes dramatically when you have global leaderboards. Uh, so I first introduced uh, leaderboards amongst your friends within games, and the competition was very, uh, well, I mean, relatively friendly. Um, you know, there were, I wasn't getting like a whole lot of like MySQL injection attacks and other other sort of things. You know, players trying to cheat. Um, as soon as I introduced global leaderboards, that changed overnight. Uh, it got to the point where I could introduce a feature, and usually within half an hour, I'd see my SQL injection attacks uh, being thrown at it. Um, and you know that, that wasn't like a huge problem, uh, but you know suddenly I'm getting you know DDoS, I'm getting all sorts of like creative things. Uh, you know, Grease Monkey scripts were uh, created to like run, hit the games, and ping my servers. So I had to start. You know, there would be people just trying to like overrun my servers, so I had to just start. You know dealing with those kind of, uh, you know, operational issues and didn't anticipate it at all. You know, I thought I had a good handle on kind of, oh, you know, here's the volume of people that are trying to cheat at the game. And as soon as I introduced global leaderboards, that increased dramatically um, and became, you know, that became more of a, you know, a time uh, suck and waste for me. Uh, so, uh, you know, I learned some things like that. Um, you know, I've learned... You know, some of the things that, that I think really uh, stood out to me are that people don't mind playing the same game uh, <clears throat> with a different uh, with a different skin. Uh, it's 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 the underlying gameplay can be the same, uh, but a, a, a different theme appeals can appeal to a, a particular demographic and completely repulse another. Um, I mean, one of the most ridiculous things I ever dealt with was I had uh, some users that hated uh, my vampire game. They were just they were sending me this, this messages full of, you know, just dripping with poison about how much they hated it, and then tell me that they loved the werewolf game I had made. And in, in the same email. And those games are running an identical code base. The only difference is using, uh, you know, a, a different set of descriptive adjectives to describe the, the, your avatar that you're playing with different pictures. There is absolutely no other difference in the gameplay, no other difference in the presentation, anything else other than just, you know, allowing the user to play as effectively as a different avatar. And so, I thought it was just really uh, fascinating to me that it was like, wow, you, a game that's virtually identical, one of them you hate, one of them you love. Well, I mean, I think more than anything else, uh, what a lot of the things that I've been learning over the last few years are things that are not, uh, these are things that I would love to have had a background in uh, building traditional games before this so that I, I knew these in advance. There's a, these aren't concepts that are new to gaming, it's just uh, new to me as I'd never built games. So um, I think there's an incredible amount of uh, value in having that knowledge and being exposed to it. And so and I've, I've been very fortunate to have the opportunity to uh, work with some people in that space and from that world and to learn from them, you know, some things that I was just like, as a, as a game, as a gamer, you don't necessarily know. I mean, just like, you know, as a user of uh, any software product, it doesn't mean you necessarily know how to build that 
type of software. Um, yeah, this is one of the things that uh, is, is really interesting to me. It's that uh, avatar selection, um, in, in some games, uh, you know, the, it, it, avatar selection, you can spend an enormous amount of engineering resources uh, to make the most amazing avatars possible. Um, but there's, just like any other feature in a product, um, you know, the more time that you invest in it, there are diminishing returns. And so you get the biggest bang for your buck um, in giving uh, users just a few very simple options. Um, and, you know, I mean, obviously every, every option that you add, you know, you, you, you know, increases the number of permutations of potential avatars, the number of problems you can have, and, you know, the amount of engineering, uh, you know, uh, resources required to generate it. So... Um, the, 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 the biggest bang for your buck are allowing users to select their gender and to select uh, from amongst just a few skin tones. And with just those two selections, you would be amazed by how many users are thrilled that they've been able to choose their avatar. And, I, I mean, you know, you, could, you can offer 10 body types, you can offer, you know, 100 hair colors and all this other sort of thing. Um, but if you nail the first two really well, you get a large percentage of the population is relatively happy. And this is true in, uh, I mean, there, there have been plenty of uh, traditional games that allow you enormous amounts of customization where you can like change the like height of the cheekbones on the user, on your avatar and all sorts of things. Um, and really and truly, uh, most players will never bother to change the cheekbone positioning of their avatar. And, you know, from an engineering perspective, that's yeah, that takes uh, some work. So, um, you know, I, I, so I, I think that that's one of the really uh, uh, dangerous areas to, to start running down, especially for, for social gamers, because you don't have nearly the resources that these other guys have. Uh, you know, you can't necessarily say, oh, here's our team that does the avatar. I think probably the largest difference is that uh, social gamers may not necessarily consider themselves gamers. Um, they don't necessarily own a console. Um, they don't necessarily go to the gaming section in their store. You know, at the Best Buy, they don't go walk in and say, "Oh, you know, I'm looking for a new video game and check it out." And I think that um, whereas you know your social gamers may be like, "Yeah, you know, I'm I don't consider myself a gamer per se, but I like to you know kill a little bit of time on the web doing this or that." Right? Um, they're you know obviously uh, they're traditionally uh, I think paired in with uh, the casual gaming audience. Um, but we've seen some really interesting things happening in the last year, uh, I say the last year, the last couple of years, uh, with the Nintendo Wii. Um, the Nintendo Wii introduced uh, gaming to an entirely new audience. Uh, and I think it, you know, it has this, it has this appeal that uh, it communicates itself much like I think a lot of social games is this is not so much a social game as it is an experience. And so you have people like my grandmother, you know, wants to play like the bowling game on the Wii, right? But there's no way in hell she would ever have bought an Xbox to play, you know, Fear 2 or something, right? Um, so I think that uh, the, a large difference in the mindset is, you know, they may not necessarily consider themselves gamers, but that doesn't mean that they don't play in very similar fashions and that they don't like a lot of the same things that gamers do. It's just they don't, you know, they're not sitting here going like, oh, what's the next generation of console is going to look like? And uh, they don't you know, upgrade their video card so that they can play Crisis um, and that sort of thing.